for so long and then right. to just up and yes. cut it off cold turkey mm-hmm. it was like man it was one of the hardest things i had to do, right. but it was worth it right but it was tough especially being able to just look and visualize <laughs> what you've already done it was hard but, but put those thoughts down and <laughs> pick up pick up the vibe we would do that though. We would. Yeah. We felt like right. um, things were getting out of like it's heated or something like that. We would go read the Bible together mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's well worth. It. Hello everybody! Welcome back to my channel. As promised, I am doing the Q and A video with my husband Harold here. And I have you guys' questions right here. We might not be able to get to all of them because you guys submitted a lot of questions, but we are excited to answer the ones we can get to. So, let's see. Alrighty. First question. How did we meet? You want me to give my version? Let me go ahead and give my version first because you're going to try to twist the truth. Go ahead. Alright. I had just moved back to New Orleans. Okay, I'm gonna as you say something correct. So go ahead. I had just moved back to New Orleans. Okay. I had been searching for a job and I landed at Walgreens. Uh huh. I was already working there. Right. Uh huh. How old was I? 19, 20. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, it was my first day, and I remember being in the back room doing paperwork and stuff when she walked by. Rewinded herself and looked oh through the window. God. And I don't like, remember. Oh start asking people questions. Really? No, for real. Start asking people like, who is? Who no, is I he? just no. Don't lie. Like, who is he? Jesus here. How old lying. is he? He looks young. I don't know how old he is. And okay, go ahead. I'm gonna to, let you finish. I need to. I need to know who he is. She's asking other people to ask me who I am and how old I am and what's my name and all kind of stuff like that. So. We met at Walgreens. Um, we were co-workers. So, we became friends, and um, when she got to know me, it was pretty much nothing she could do to keep her herself away from me. She tried. This is what really happened. So, yes, he started working at Walgreens. I had already been there for probably a year or so before he got there. On his first day, when he came, one of my friends that worked there at the time, she was a manager, Pulled me aside and was like, they have this new guy here. He's cute. He looks like he's your type, but he's really young. So there was no asking about him or his or who he was because my friend was already a manager. She already knew all of his information. She already knew he was 19. So I didn't have to ask any of that. So, so I went. Quick, so you got. I didn't interrupt you. So you got, I didn't interrupt Yes, you did. Oh. So you got the manager to pull my file. I didn't get nobody to pull your file. She came to me with this. She, she got the manager to pull my. She just admitted. She just got the manager to pull she my files. She came to me get my with information, it. which is illegal. Oh my god! She came you to me with this. Pull my files to get my age. You probably had my social. So she was like, "Oh, he's already nineteen. He's nineteen. So I went past by the room where he was at, where he was doing his little training or whatever. I was like, oh, "Okay, he is cute, but he is young. So whatever, whatever. I wasn't worried about him." Uh, Go ahead. How old were you at the time? I wasn't even 21 yet at the exactly. time. Exactly. So what are you talking about? He was young. I'm saying. You like you a cougar or something. You was the one a year and some change older than me. Okay, keep going. But she knew my preference was to date older people. That's why she was saying that. Okay. So that's how we met. We met at Walgreens. We were both working at Walgreens. We became friends. And from becoming friends, he fell in love with me. And he was like, I love you so much. I can't help but to think about you. <laughs> so you know how you get this feeling when you're not around somebody that you just need to be around them? I had that feeling. And back then, I wasn't really mature in my walk with Christ, I guess you could say. So that's one of the reasons that I can tell you now that um, I fell in love with her. She just motivated me to be a better person. And that's one of the main reasons I felt and I knew she was the best. one because you were always very protective of me even from the beginning even when we were just friends you were always very protective of me you always looked out for me you had my best interests at heart with my friends with my family and what I was trying to do with my life 
you always kept me grounded and you always made sure that I thought out all of my decisions. You were very caring, you were always very sweet. I always knew that no matter what we was going through that you loved me and you always made sure that I knew that you loved me and you just have this way about you. Like you're a protector, like that's your, you know how everybody like have their thing? Like that's your thing. And that's, that was like what really drew me to you. Can you give me advice on staying consistent in God and not getting sidetracked? I will go first on that one. So um, the biggest thing with staying consistent in, in God is making sure you keep him first in everything. And I know that's like a cliche. Everybody always say that. But it's so important that you don't get like sidetracked with life. Like after I got married and then like after I had Liam, it was so easy for me to only be focused on them. It was so easy for me to just focus on them. But at the same time, I have to realize, like, God made my husband, God made my son. He still comes first before both of them. I still, he comes first before my business. He comes first before my marriage, my children. I have to always make sure I take that time to pray, take that time to um, spend time with God and just keeping him first, like, not making it feel like a chore, but keeping that a part of your life. So... If you're single, no matter what you're doing, like make sure, even if it's in the morning or if it's at night, that you spend that time with God, that you take time out of your day. During the second time around, was it difficult not to bring up the things from the past or were they discussed and then you guys moved on? Um, we definitely discussed things from the past and then kind of moved on, but they do pop, pop up you know, every now and then, but we have an effective way of communicating about it. We don't just keep throwing the past in each other's face. You know, we, we got past it and got through it together. So there's no reason to keep on bringing up the past if it's not going to help. Right. And just, you know, bring harm or pain to the relationship. So. Right. And just to piggyback off of that, I don't think we really bring up, like, everything from the past. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's, like, specific stuff that we bring up. So I don't think, I really don't think we're to the point in our marriage where it's like, oh, remember when you did, or remember when you said, I think it's just like everyday stuff that every husband and wife deal with. I don't think it's specific stuff where it's like, oh, in the past you did so-and-so, so I expect you to do so-and-so. No, it's not like that. I think we're pretty good at communicating. Even though like both of us are hotheads, a lot of times like if something's like getting to the point where we like bump the heads, we just kind of like have to let it go until one of us calms down. And is able to come back and be like, okay, this is what I meant. This is how I meet, especially me. I have to do a lot of this is what I meant to say, even though I said it in a whole other way. That's not what I meant. I was just angry and it came out this way. What advice would you give to a Christian single lady who's waiting to be found by her God-ordained husband? Or do you have any words of encouragement for singles? Um, I would always say, and I've given females this advice, I always put God first and and kind of focus on yourself and in in God and he will direct you in that in that you know in that way. Right. You can't you can't look for something and then say God put his approval on it. You have to let it happen. Never put the desire for a, a man or a husband before your desire to get closer to God. Right. And um careful where you look for men too and because it's I'm not saying it's not good guys that that you know go to clubs and stuff but a lot of the time um, the lifestyle that some a, a guy lives you know it's pretty clear watch the fruit yeah. watch the fruit <laughs> if they always in the club always at the strip club then nine times out of ten that they're not trying to lead you in Christ they're not trying to live the type of life that you're trying to live, the type of life that's laid out in the Bible. Do you have anything else? And uh, uh, you can't you can't force a, a, a man to to be the type of guy. You can't force a man to, to be a godly man. You can't right. mold him into mm -hmm. what you want him to be. And so she good. had to learn that the hard yeah, way. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Because uh, I used to try. Yeah, she tried to make me into somebody I wasn't ready to be in. Until we split, um, I would I had to realize that she couldn't change me. I had to change on my own. Right. I had to go through my walk with God by my by myself. Right. And then, you know, mature into the person that God wanted me to be, so I could be a husband to her. Right. 
Yeah, that's so good. And I'll just piggyback off of that because I get so many emails from y'all, especially after y'all done like broke up with your boyfriend and you're like, well, how long do you think it should take before we get back together? Because I know you and your husband broke up and then like y'all got back together. And a lot of the times we look at people's relationship and we try to get a formula from it and we look at people's testimony and we try to get the formula like, okay, um, Chelsea did X, Y, and Z and he changed, so I'm going to do X, Y, and Z and hopefully he changed. And a lot of times when you're trying to mimic somebody's story, you get yourself in a lot of trouble because that person might not have actually changed. They might just be saying that to get back with you or they might just be doing certain things to get back with you and then you end up in a situation where you thought it was something that in the person was somebody else and they're not that person so if you're single I, my advice to you is enjoy this time like travel do internships like focus on yourself like focus on getting your own life in order and when that guy comes along the way you'll already be i'm not saying established financially but you'll already have a good sense of yourself you'll already know who you are in christ so you won't be looking to them to fulfill your identity if that makes sense so use this time like be single enjoy it i always tell people that like just because you're single don't mean you can't enjoy life like because now that we're married we have to constantly like our schedules have to intermingle we can't just go do what we want to do that's why you're single enjoy that people be in such a rush to get married and i'm like it's beautiful and it's an awesome thing but enjoy that season in your life Liam is like, if y'all don't shut up. <laughs> How do you guys deal with arguments and disagreements? I'll take this one first. I feel like we get a little bit better because, um, like I say, I think both of us, I won't say like we're hotheads. I just think it's a New Orleans thing. I think because both of us are from New Orleans, we kind of, um, we have that, that kind of like that. Defensive mechanism. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like that fire and it's always like a, ready to like come at you type of thing so i think we get a little bit better in that i think as time progressed like we're way better than how we were when we first started dating because like i used to break your phone <laughs> i used to try to like hop out the car like i would threaten him um all types of stuff just stuff that just i'm pretty sure didn't please god and didn't please the lord so now when we have disagreements if it escalate it might escalate because my voice might escalate not because i'm trying to break his phone and um I usually come back and I think I've gotten a lot better like about apologizing and because mm -hmm. I used to I would not like he would have to like drag it out of me he'd be like so you sorry and I'd be like, <laughs> like <laughs> but I think we got a lot better I think you've gotten a lot better I think you've got a trillion times better like your communication is awesome so we deal with arguments and disagreements like if it escalates we just come back later and we just like deal with it later you had anything you wanted to say Cause I just <laughs> took off. <laughs> um, we used to do a lot of trying to hurt the other's feelings with things we didn't really mean. But like, if I did something to hurt her feelings, she would try to say something to hurt my feelings, and it was just a lot of immaturity. And just to say, we were young. We were yeah. like 20, 21, 22. Yeah. So now, you know, if it's a problem, um, I try to be the one, the bigger person, and come to her and say, um, "Do you want to?" talk about this or handle this before it gets out of hand and, and she'll most of the time say yeah we can talk about it you know just a mature way of communicating with each other now so we handle problems and issues way better but if it does if it's something you feel like you can't talk about right then and there without saying something you don't mean then we walk away mm -hmm. I might go to the gym come back uh, most of the time as soon as I leave the house she send me a text message and be like uh, no you didn't just leave <laughs> Which is for you. How should a godly man pursue the woman that God has told him is his wife? That's a guy asking it. Um, the way I did it, um, after we broke up, um, I, I was going through a lot. But when I was seeking God for myself, I, I found out that I had to approach her in a, a, a respectful way and, you know, go the courting route. So no sex. You know, you, you ask her what are her expectations from you, and you know if you put God first, you know you, your job as a husband is to lead your wife, and uh, I lost my train. <laughs> <laughs> you have dad brain, like I'm like I have mom brain. You have dad I was brain. Thinking about brain totally different, different. <laughs> well, I'll just jump in then. Um, my advice to you is, 
like like he said, like just be upfront. Approach her and and both of y'all lay out y'all expectations. Like this is what she expects, this is what you expect. And be honest with yourself. Like if you feel like you can't fulfill that or if you feel like she can't fulfill, you know, what your purpose you might be for your wife or your fiance or your girlfriend, like be respectful and be able to like bow out. Like y'all might not be for each other. So if you're gonna pursue her, like make your intentions clear. Like lay it out for her and be like, I want to court you, I wanna pursue you. And these, this is the rules that we have to have set up, whether it's like not talking after 12 at night, not being alone at a certain point, not being alone at all, like lay all of that out and like stick to it. Don't just um, say it and then don't follow up on it, like stick to it. It's, I know your next question was like, what were some of your traits, what are some traits that you should look for? What are your deal breakers? Like they have to believe in God. They have to... Um, be sold out to God. Like, don't just go get you somebody that's like, oh, I believe in God, but they be in a club. They be, like, um, doing meth in, um... <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> doing meth. <laughs> and, like, getting drunk and stuff like that. Like, make sure the fruit matches the tree. So if they say they're an apple tree, then they should be showing apples. They shouldn't say they're apple tree and it's, like, lemons on the tree. Now that you have your husband and your son, can you touch on if you're a stay-at-home mom also what was your profession prior to your son so um we have businesses so we both work from home so we we're both always here with Liam and before that um I was at home because I was still um doing my businesses and he was you were in school at the time and then you graduated and then we started another business and now he's at home as well so we're stay at home working parents uh I don't know like if you're comfortable answering it if not then we can skip it but Somebody was like, was it awkward like having sex after the wait? I've been so used in the past and I'm nervous that when I do get married and after God delivering me from all those soul ties, I may have negative remnants from sex when I get married to my God ordained husband. Do you want to answer that? So, they want to know like if it was awkward for us. Um, no, it wasn't awkward. It was actually... Uh, <laughs> 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 what's the word? Better? Yeah, I was looking for a better word than better. But it was actually much better, like well worth the wait. Mm. Uh everything was just on another level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's the same. I think um what people have to realize, like, some people feel like, um I was it was a while back. I was talking to women at a Bible study and um one girl was like, she was dating a guy, and he was like a Christian woman, probably all boring in bed and stuff like that. But what people have to realize, like, when you have two Christ-focused people, and you know, like, the word says, like, my body belongs to him, and his body belongs to me. Like, you, you work to please that person. Like, that's your job. Like, that's biblical. That's in the word. Like, you're supposed to be working to make sure your husband or your wife is happy. So, I'll just leave it at that. Has God ever led you to quit a job or lead you? To a different route with your career because of your walk with him um i don't feel like um i don't feel like we were like ever led to like quit a job like i think a lot of times we make sure what we're doing all of the time we make sure what we're doing is like gonna line up biblically like we not just gonna go start a business we're not just gonna go start a strip club because that doesn't line up with god's word like we make sure what we're doing lines up with god's word and we know like the whole purpose that the vision of us wanting to be stay-at-home working parents is because we want to be here for our kids. We actually want to raise them. Like, not knocking anybody that puts their child in daycare, but I think it's important for us to, like, have a handle on our children and what they're around and what they're being introduced to. And I think um, that pleases God, and I think that's why we went the route that we went. And just to add to that, how she said um, we don't do things that don't align with God. You know, we we have a graphic design business, and somebody asked me, um, offered me a lot of money to make a website that had to do with porn, mm -hmm. and I was like, Nah, we can't we can't right. get involved with that because right. that's not what we represent and who we represent. So, right. Um, it was a lot of opportunities that we do have, and a lot of work that we could have gotten to that um, didn't please God, but right. we, you know, we can't right. go that route. Right. Just because the money is there doesn't mean that God is there. Okay, the battery went out.
<laughs> me to do that. Currently single and waiting on God for my husband. I'm trying not to think about it. As a single, were you so focused on God that you weren't even thinking about a husband or a wife? I believe I have to stop idolizing marriage and focus on Jesus. Also, can you deal with how you dealt with being single and doing whatever to be to being submissive, submissive to your husband? So I guess that's for me, so I'll answer this pretty quickly. Um, when I was single, I was super focused on God. Like, he could tell you, like, <coughs> I was going to uh, Christian conferences. I was going to, like, Christian poetry slams. I was always in fellowship with other female Christians all the time so, um, the transition from being single to being married it wasn't i'm not gonna say it wasn't hard it was a, um it was like a, a it didn't have a steep learning curve that's what i mean it wasn't hard because i i was kind of i was used to being in a relationship with him already and i'm not the type of person that's like always wanting to be out so as far as like being submissive to my husband do you think i do a good job of being submissive yeah I think you do a good job. Oh, <laughs> no, I thought you were about to say something else. No, um, I don't. And I think people take submission and they make it like a big thing, and it really shouldn't be a big thing. I feel like if you, as a woman, are already submitted to God, like it's gonna be easy to submit to your husband. Uh, your husband should be. Uh, a man, a guy, he should submit to God anyway. So it shouldn't be a problem for her to submit to me if she know that um, my beliefs and my um, my idea. Um, I lost my track. <laughs> you have to so bad. <laughs> like I think he's trying to say. I think um, when you know that your husband is a, in submission to Christ, it's not going to be hard for you to submit to them, right? And I think that's important because I, a lot of women, whenever like submission comes up, don't like submission. But I feel like they've seen it in a bad light. Like for example, if you've seen your mother in submission to a man that wasn't a Christian, or seeing um, just seeing a man take it and objectify it, because a lot of times you'll have a man feel like, oh, you gonna do what I say you gonna do. Like I'm your head. It's no other way. Like this is what I say. This is it. And that's why it's so important when you're dating somebody that you check the fruit and make sure they're not like a controlling person and they don't take something as beautiful as submission and turn it into something ugly and nasty. Like, I know for a fact, like, he's not going to take that position and make me feel like, oh, I got to do what you say. Like, it's not like that. It's something that's supposed to be beautiful. It's something that's supposed to be comfortable. It's something that's supposed to be natural. So when you're with somebody that you know for a fact wouldn't take that and turn it and twist it, then you should be comfortable doing it. And if you've seen it in a bad light and you feel like that might make you feel a certain type of way towards your husband, even if he is a good headship, then that's something for you to pray about. That's something for you to take to God and um, lay it out unto the Lord and let him deal with that within you. How did you stop listening to worldly or trap music? Um, well, this is the thing. And I want I wanted to like make a part two to that video because I think a lot of people took it as I meant, like you can't listen to any like R&B or you can't listen to like any rap. And that wasn't the point of that video. Like, the point of that video was basically saying, like, if the music doesn't, if the music is, like, singing or rapping stuff that's, like, against God and that, like, is at odds with God's word, like, you shouldn't listen to it. And I feel like um, a lot of people took that video and was like, oh, like, then only I only get to listen to gospel music. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, if the music is, like, objectifying women, uh, talking about sex, talking about killing people, talking about things that are like laid out in the word, like you shouldn't do, then you shouldn't listen to it. So it wasn't hard for me to stop listening to that stuff because um, I think once I came to, to God in 2014, at the end of 2014, I let go a lot of stuff. Like I let go, he can tell you, like I let go a lot of TV shows, stuff that I, I enjoy as a person watching because I knew that if I continuously fed my flesh, that type of stuff, then I wouldn't be able to like glorify God with my thoughts. Um, you just gotta be careful with what you let into your spirit. I know a lot of people who let music influence them the wrong way. Um, I, <laughs> I know a lot of people who uh, let music influence them the wrong way. You know, a lot of the times if you interview people who have done something they regret or have 
kill somebody or hurt somebody, they'll tell you that they listen to mm -hmm. a certain type of music before to prepare them for that state of mind. Like, right. It's a lot of things that rappers say that can, man, I used to feel like that too. Like, if I was, if I knew, if I was angry, I'd go listen to music that just added Beats to that me. anger. Like, so you just got to be careful what type of music you let, uh, what you listen to and how you let it control your emotions and your actions. <laughs> what you need to be a godly wife oh and you need Jesus to be a godly wife like I'm not going to sit here and list out steps because me and you are two different people and just how I am it doesn't mean like you have to be that way like I know godly wives that aren't like prissy and frilly but they're godly wives to their husbands so Jesus like let God lead you in the type of wife that you need to be like you don't need to be like me or anybody else you see on social media be the godly wife that God has called you to be. So as long as you're praying for your husband, you're living out the word, you're being an example to him, then you are a godly wife. Don't feel like you have to fit into like this mold or look a certain type of way. Oh, did you find it challenging like wanting to date when you were single when me and you weren't together? Like, was that challenging to you? One day when we weren't when we yeah. together? Uh, yeah, it was challenging only because I, I knew that I wanted to be with her. It was just um, the only reason I would have wanted a date was be was because, you know, it's something to take your mind off the kind of pain that you're going through when you, when you break up with somebody you love. And uh, she had blocked my number. Like, that's how serious she was about staying Block on track. Block them numbers, <laughs> girls. Block them numbers. Staying on track with God. She blocked my number. I was still sending text messages, like, every week. <laughs> Shut Knowing up. my number was blocked. Shut I was still sending it. But um, it just showed me... But when she dedicated herself to God like that, it kind of motivated me to do the same. So um, when I found out my number was blocked, I was like, man, that's some serious stuff. She don't want me to sidetrack her no way because she know if I talk to her enough. Um, I was going to be right yeah, back. Yeah, so she did what she felt was necessary to, you know, stay on track and stay um, stay dedicated to her walk or whatever or something. Yeah, and I think that's uh, important, especially if you're coming out of a relationship or you have an ex and you're like, oh, you know, I'm just going to still chat with them even though we're not together. That's the surest way to get back into the relationship and then you'll be right back at step one, sending, having sex, doing everything that landed you in the um, predicament that you was in when y'all first broke up. Did you receive any ridicule being a man choosing to abstain and live for Christ? Oh, my God. Absolutely. Probably every... Friend, I thought I had <laughs> was like, what is wrong with you? You tripping, man? Let's let's do this, let's do that. She'll take your mind off of it, blah blah blah. blah. I, when I told people I was trying to live for Christ and and uh, and abstain from sex until uh, God brought us back together, they thought I was crazy. They called me all kind of names. You know what I'm saying? They told me. Um, they they start throwing up all kind of stuff in my face that I used to do. It was like That's how you can't you. you can't change him. You you just did this and you just did that. Right. It's like you gotta start somewhere. So when you start that walk, people gonna say you this type of person, you that type of right. person, and they gonna throw all kind of stuff that you trying to get away from in your face. So I received all everything you could probably think of from doing what I did, from family, from friends, people you would never, cause you thought would support you in your right. walk, but you know, I lost a lot of friends, I'm, as did she, so uh, you just gotta, you gotta think about what you gain and, and, and not what you losing, because nothing on the earth, on this earth is, you know, equivalent to what you're gonna, what you're gonna get in heaven. So what are some of the things that you learned in marriage and what are some of your struggles? The things that I learned in marriage is to be selfless and, and not selfish. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of things that I used to do that I can't do anymore. I have to, you know, but it's all worth it. You can't do everything you used to do. So right. I used to want to be at the gym five days a week playing basketball oh, yeah. whenever I want. And then that five days a week kind of turned to um, two or three <laughs> days a week. So, uh yeah, it's just it's sacrifices, man. When you right. marry, it's a lot of sacrifices. It's stuff that she want to do that she can't do anymore. Right. But um, it's all worth it when you right. have 
when you have a family like I do. So. And I and I'll just say this, um, because we don't let everybody watch our child, we can't do a lot of stuff. Like for if we was like one of those parents that was like super free with our child and like leave him with anybody, we'll be able to do a lot of stuff. But because we are protective of Liam, we hand him off. So, for example, after this video, he's going to the gym, and um, his mom is going to watch Liam. But usually, I will have Liam. And if I want to go do something, then he'll have Liam. And that's that's um, partially part of the reason why. So, um, somebody asked if we face issues with pornography before or during or after our relationship. And I don't think, I don't think either one of us have had like a thing with porn. And um, just because we haven't, that doesn't, like, shame you if you, like, have issues with porn. But just know that if you do feel addicted to it, you know, God is able to help you and you're, you're able to overcome that. And um, practice a pick up, put down. And what I mean by that is, like, when you have thoughts, like, sexual thoughts, or thoughts, like, geared towards pornography, hurry up and redirect your mind. Like, start to pray. Start listening to worship music. Like, start thinking on the things of God. And pick pick up the godly things and put down those thoughts. And I had to practice that a lot when me and him broke up. Like if I started to think about him, whether it was like good thoughts, bad thoughts, or sexual thoughts, I had to immediately like put those thoughts down. Yeah. Um, do you think physical attraction is important in a Christian relationship? Yeah, so when, when, you, when you're in love with somebody, you know, you're going to be attracted to them. Everyone, you know, what people deem attractive is different for everybody. So, um, different things might be attractive to you. It don't always have to be physical, but physical attraction is it's important to me. But at the same time, look at her. So I don't. I mean, I just think I just think um, if you love somebody, then you're gonna be attracted to them. So it no goes, matter it if their body like changes, right? It, if her body changes, I'm gonna always be physically attracted to her because of the love I have. So. Right, and I think that's important. Like when people think about physical attraction, it's usually like, oh, okay, that person's cute. I want to be with them. But at the same time, you have to realize if there's nothing else, like if you don't like their personality, if you guys can't connect spiritually, and um, so many other things. If that's not there, what's gonna happen when that person gets old, or if that person like gains weight, or once you have a baby, and like all of those changes like comes about, like what's gonna happen then? Like if you're only liking them, or think you're in love with them. Solely based on how they look, you're gonna soon realize like once you're married to them, you're gonna need something else to sustain that. Because even though my husband's super fine and cute, when I'm mad at him, that don't matter. Like it has to be something else <laughs> to make me realize like, okay, this is why I love him. Because he could be cute, but what's gonna happen like when you guys start going through stuff? Like cute ain't gonna be there when like hard times comes. Like you need a little bit more than that. We went over that. How challenging was it to abstain from sex after having been sexually active with each other? And <laughs> what's your thoughts on friends of the opposite sex? I'll go first. Um, I don't, the only friends that I've ever really had of the opposite sex were um, years ago. Like I had a ton of gay male friends, and but I've never really had like um, male friends. Like I did, but it didn't turn out well. And um, I don't really, I don't, it's, mm, I don't really know. Like, for me, I wouldn't want to have, like, a single male friend. Like, I feel like if I'm going to have, like, male friends, and I need to be friends with your wife. And me and you need to know each other through your wife and, like, only that. And um, that's just how I feel. And as far as, like, abstaining from, was it hard? Yes, it was super hard to, like, abstain from sex, especially if you're with somebody that you were with before y'all were in Christ. It's so important to like have rules in place and have boundaries in place. For me, I feel like I don't need to have single female friends. You know, I, I have acquaintances that I've known since high school and stuff like that, but I, I keep it on a, a high and by basis or, you know, something that we, Facebook or something like that, just talking about random, you know, subjects. I never get personal with, with females just because, you know, I want to respect my marriage. And I'm crazy. She's crazy. But, uh, yeah, but for other people, I just think you gotta, you know, they they need to be Christian first off, and then, um... <laughs> that brain. <laughs> I feel like that's it. Um, I don't think you should be married entertaining no single friends. That's the surest way to ask for trouble, because let's say, for example, I had a male friend, and I'm upset at my husband, and I'm going to them, crying on their shoulder, and saying all the things wrong with my husband, 
that just leaves the door open for them to be like, well, like, you know, and that's not safe. Like, that's not okay. And if something's happened, you didn't jeopardize your whole marriage. You didn't jeopardize your family just because you had a weak moment because maybe your husband or your wife made you upset. So I think just to not be in those predicaments, you don't need to have single friends when you're married. Your friends should be in relationships or be married. And if you already have those friends and you fixing to be married, then you need to lay down some ground rules and they need to become friends with your husband. Exactly. And the only time you need to speak to them is through your husband when your husband is there. It shouldn't be no you talking to them. Because him and your husband friends now, so that's not your friend no more. So you just talk to him through them. Right, I agree. I think you should. Um, if you have, a, if I have a female friend, which I have one, one girl I consider a female friend, and she has you know been in contact with her. She knows all about her. My female friend loves her, so you know that's how it needs to be. And as far as the question about what was it, was it hard, hard to have to a thing after? Mm-hmm. It was horrible. It was the worst <laughs> thing I've ever seen Shut in my up. life. Don't say that. It grows you in Christ. Like it, it, it does. It <laughs> does. <laughs> it grows you in Christ and um because this is this is the thing and this is what I tell like my best friend if this man can like put his flesh in submission or if this woman can't put his flesh in submission then the self-control is not there so who's to say that they'll be able to like control themselves in other situations and it's not like to test anybody because God calls for us to be pure and to be abstinent but you need to know for a fact that um, the flesh is like they have control over their flesh like they can control themselves and I think that's really really important um, for a man and for a woman so if you're with a guy or if you're with a girl and you're like oh I want to wait and they're like oh well I'm not trying to do that you know it's alright if we do that then no then that's that's not going to work that's not going to be pleasing to God and if they can't control themselves with you or if he or she can't control themselves with you then that self control is going to spill out into other areas of life into um, other areas of your marriage. Yeah, but it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. It was very it was tough. Like, especially had had um, you know been it had already been done. So right, we had been doing it for so long, and then right. to just up but and yes. cut it off cold turkey, mm-hmm. it was like man, it was one of the hardest things I had to do. Right. But it was worth it. Right. But it was tough, especially being able to just look and visualize <laughs> what you've already done. It was hard, but. but Put those thoughts down and <laughs> pick up. Pick up the Bible. We would do that though. We would. Yeah. We felt like right. Um, things were getting out of like it's heated or something like that. We would go read the Bible together mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's well worth. It. All right. So these are the last two questions. Anybody I didn't get to, just comment below on this video and I'll answer your question. Um, did you guys receive premarital counseling? So we didn't receive premarital counseling, but we actually went to a marriage retreat. And our pastor wrote this book. I don't know the name of it right now. I'll put it down below. He wrote this book, and it was basically a book of the questions that he would ask in premarital counseling. It was was called um, uh, I'm Married What Now? No, we read that after. It was something. um, I'll put up a picture. And um, we went through all of those questions. It was questions about finances, questions about children, beliefs, questions about um, opposite sex friends. It was all of those questions. And we went through those questions and we went on the retreat. I think we kind of went over that. I think that's it. Well, thank you guys for tuning into our video. Um, I appreciate you guys sending the questions and hopefully you got to know us a little bit better and got to see my husband and my our son Liam, even though he's like not in a good mood right now. <laughs> you wanna take your look out and smile? Hey! Hey Mimi! Hey Mimi! <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next time and hopefully we answer all your questions, but we have 